What's up guys, I'm Paul's Build, and today I'm going to take you through 10 mistakes you may be making in Planet Zoo. Okay, so number one is don't make giant habitats or you'll be taxed for them. I know the tendency when we start is to make massive habitats for all our animals because we just want them to have as much space as possible, but the bigger you make your habitats, the more tax you're going to have to pay for them and your zoo's finances might suffer as a result. Okay, so number two is make sure your habitat is the right size before you decorate it. I've done this so many times. If you put a gate in, then the habitat will actually show you how big it is. And you can check that against the size requirement in the Zoopedia to see if it's large enough for your animals. If it's not large enough, make it bigger and then decorate it. Number three is don't put a roof on a building until you've decorated the inside. And I know that this may sound obvious, but I've done it so many times where I've wanted to decorate the outside of the building and make a really nice exterior and then make the inside. But what will happen then is that once you put the roof on, the camera controls become so difficult to use. Creating the inside is just a massive pain at that point. So what you want to do is you want to create the outside shell, excluding the roof, then go inside and do all your decorations inside and then top it all off with a nice roof. Number four, when building water habitats, check that your water can be put in frequently. Okay, so you need to approach this like you're saving a document that you're working on. The water in Planet Zoo can be really finicky and sometimes the water will place, sometimes it won't. If you just move a little piece of land, sometimes the water won't place anymore. And there's nothing worse than making loads of edits and making the landscape look really amazing. And then you go to put the water in at the end and it just won't go. Or you put it in, but it will go at a different level and it doesn't look like it did before. Just periodically check that you can place the water back while you're making edits. And at the end, you'll have a habitat that you're happy with. Number five is to put space between your habitats. You don't have to have habitats backing onto each other. And in a real zoo, people are used to walking for hours. So having a little bit of space between your habitats is expected. Plus, it gives you the chance to get creative and maybe make some points of interest along the paths. If you don't have space between your habitats, then what's gonna happen is all of your guests are gonna get really clustered up into these paths. And it doesn't matter if you make your paths wide, they're still gonna get really clustered and it's not gonna look as nice and your zoo's not gonna work as well. Number six is similar to number five. Don't put facilities on the main path. Put them on a secondary path if you can, or if you can't, just move them back so that they have a little bit of extra space that they'll form themselves. This is because guests will queue up when they're shopping at your facilities and if you have a little path that they can queue into, they don't obstruct the main path. If you do just have facilities placed right on the main path, what's going to happen is guests are going to queue up and they're going to obstruct all of the main path and it's going to be a mess. And this point also applies to viewing points on habitats. So when you make your habitats, there's going to be key viewing areas where guests can get a really good view of your animals. And if you set it up so that these key viewing points are obstructing the main path, then you're going to interfere with the, the flow of movement around your zoo. It's just sometimes nicer to have a little bit of an extra section where they can walk in and see the animals there and not obstruct anyone else who's just going to get a smoothie or some water or a burger or whatever one they want to buy at your zoo. Number seven is to use viewing platforms for large habitats. So some animals like the polar bear require these massive habitats because they need loads of open space. And if you just have viewing areas all around the outside, whenever that polar bear's in the middle of the habitat, no one is gonna get a good view and all of your guests are gonna complain about it. So what could help is to have viewing areas that stick over the habitat or maybe like a crosswalk or something like that that can cut across the habitat and guests can get a good view no matter where the polar bear is. Number eight is don't forget your utilities. Remember to plan your space around your utilities too, or at least incorporate them into it. Because there's nothing worse than planning a space that looks amazing, and then you realise there's no room for the water pumping station, or there's no room for power station, and your education boards aren't going to get powered. These are important utilities for your park, and you need to remember them when you're making plans. Number nine is similar to the problem with utilities, is not using the starting power source for your zoo. So this is a huge reason why loads of zoos go bankrupt at the start, is because everyone buys a transformer really early on. Transformers are really expensive to run, and if you can avoid it by just using the starting power area that comes with your zoo, you're going to save so much money and your zoo is going to benefit massively. And number 10, probably the most common problem people have in Planet Zoo, is don't put expensive animals in early on or you'll go bankrupt. 
And I know, I understand, as soon as we get the game, we want to put in, we want to go lions and tigers and bears and all of these amazing animals that are so interesting and they look amazing, but they're very expensive to feed and a young zoo is not going to have the money to support a tiger or a lion. And there's just no budget for it. They cost so much with each feeding and it's going to massively drain on your budget. So if you can avoid putting these in until you're in the mid to late game, your zoo is going to thank you for it. And that's it for my top 10 mistakes you're probably making in Planet Zoo.